But 18-year-old Charlotte Hawkins Brown was one young woman who refused to accept this way of life. Jim Crow was a challenge to be overcome, not an obstacle to prevent her from fulfilling her mission. I sit in the Jim Crow car, but my mind is rejuvenated to strive harder, to build a race that will someday rise in majesty and break down every wall of segregation in American life. Charlotte Hawkins Brown. Leaving Massachusetts, where she had been educated, she returned to her home state of North Carolina to teach. When Charlotte Hawkins got off the train, there was no station, so she had no idea where she was. It was in the middle of the woods. So I think it was a little fear. You know, this is not New England. I'm in a different place. Where am I? I'm in this state. I have no idea. I don't remember. Yes, it's my home state, but where do I go from here? I think she adjusted well. In 1901, she converted an old blacksmith's shed into a schoolhouse and opened the Alice Freeman Palmer Memorial Institute. For the next two decades, she struggled to raise money to build her school into an outstanding educational institution. Because white donors were reluctant to support a school that developed minds rather than domestic skills, Brown had to use subterfuge. When Brown begins teaching there, uh, she has to say that she has a vocational school. I think the reason that whites wanted African Americans to continue the agriculture and domestic skills was it kept them at a certain level. I mean, it, didn't, it did not give them the education to you know, inspire them to do more. Her teachers said that you would pretend to have a vocational school on the outside and then you would go in your classroom and teach them French or Latin or anything that you knew. As people said, she had highfalutin ideas and, and high aims for her students. And she was teaching the three R's, but she was also uh, in, intent on teaching them leadership qualities. During the early years, in order to raise money for the school, Dr. Brown had to come up with some type of um, fundraising solution. And she came up with letter writing, writing to all of the Northerners, telling them what they've learned at the school, what they were doing, writing and requesting support, anything. I mean, anything that they could give at that time. Dear Mrs. Worth, I have worried your patience, no doubt, but I have delivered the message of my soul to you. It is not the message of an individual, but the cry of a struggling race. Please make all checks payable to the treasurer, Charlotte Hawkins Brown. I am sending you $10 for your school, which I hope will be put to good use. I advise you to instruct your girls to be virtuous, for moral looseness is an unfortunate quality of many young women of your race. Her life was a balancing act. Her life was an act of trying to uh, appease white people, white liberals who would give the school money and who would try to help the school in other ways. And then on the other hand, to try to work in an African-American freedom struggle that she clearly saw is ongoing, that she clearly saw herself as part of. She fought fights that people didn't usually fight in those days. They just went along with the system. But I think that if, if at any time she could go against the system, that's what Dr. Brown did. She took them to the movie theater where she would have special showing so they didn't have to sit up in the balcony. She was, of course, as we always said, a woman ahead of her time. She was smart enough to use every opportunity to, to develop the students. Yes, she always told us that you can be as good as anybody else, regardless of what, what your color is. But she told us that, and, 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 and we appreciated that. Because, you know, you go around thinking that you can't do this and you can't that, you, you will never be nothing or something like that. She made it, told us it wasn't, wasn't true. We could be anything we wanted to be. Recognizing the need of a cultural approach to life, I have devoted my life to establishing for Negro youth something superior to Jim Crowism. Sometimes the prejudice is so great, I feel that I can't stand it a day longer. But then I look into the delicate faces of the children and determine to stick it out no matter what the cost. Charlotte Hawkins Brown.